Welcome back to the shop here at Basin Motorsports. I'm Kanan. Today we're going to make a partial shelf cover for a fifth generation Corvette. So what we're going to work on for the project car itself is a 2004 Chevrolet Corvette. This is the fifth generation, so they call it a C5. And this is a Z06 model, or the body style is called a fixed roof coupe. What that means is it is not a convertible and it does not have the hatchback where it lifts up. It truly has kind of a sloping down into a trunk. So what we're gonna do is build behind the two front passenger seats or the two seats really is kind of a shelf in between where the base of the windshield comes down to where the front is. Now it's a little dark in here and I apologize for that, but this is what we're going to do. So you can see where the window comes down. I do have a panel for noise to separate kind of the trunk area from the pass through to the passenger cabin. But you can see I have a dehumidifier packet right there that helps kind of pull the moisture out. So you have this kind of this partial shelf area is what I call a partial shelf. It's right behind the seats and we're going to make a cover for this. So the material we're going to use on the interior of the Corvette this year is going to be from Relicate Leather. Now it's a blue plaid. Some may say it's a tartan, but it's a blue plaid out of their Porsche collection. Now this is more European inspired, but because I have blue flames and a lot of blue things on the car, this fits very well with the blue and black theme. Now the area we're covering is going to be roughly 16 inches deep, four to aft, and about 44 side to side. You can get a 45 on a couple areas, but just cutting at a rate rectangle from 16 to 44 is going to be pretty good. So I've already cut my material here. I just measured it out with, of course, the big long rulers. Cut it out with my Italian shears. And so what I have now is a piece that is a little bit over 44 because I could do 44 to 45 in width and I can do 15 to 16 in back. So this is a little bit over 16 just to keep with the pattern itself. But it's like 16 and an eighth or so, but it's nothing big. Because I have that panel, anything that's deeper than 15 or 15 and a half will just go under that panel and it will look very clean anyway. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the extra material, I'm gonna roll this back up, put it back in the box. I'm gonna go over and get some quarter inch heavy density or high density scrim foam. Now this is what you typically see on the back of upholstery things like seat covers itself. But I'm gonna put this on there. One, it's a little bit of noise protection. Yeah, great, but it also helps level this out and it'll give me a good foundation to put a nice black edging on to make this kind of a completed panel. All right, so here is our foam now. I've cut it about an inch, inches or more around the edges. That will give me a little bit extra foam. A lot of times when you're sewing, sometimes you can get a little bit of pull on or anything else on this, and I wanna make sure it lays flat. So I'm going to go ahead and just give it a little bit extra foam. The foam can be cut off once you have this sewn, which is going to be next. I'm going to sew this on my uh, sewing machine, and then we will cut off any extra sides or any extra pieces beyond the edge of the material here. Now here at the sewing machine on my NC6 model that I have, I already have black thread in there. It's a 138 thread, which means it's, it's pretty big, but for this, it's going to be fine. It's not exactly structural. It's more of a vanity piece, but... Since I have it already in the machine, we're just gonna go ahead and run with it. Now the purpose of this is just sewing the foam to the material itself that keeps it together. You can also go ahead and use some spray glue if you'd like to, if you're worried about it. I'm really not, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. I guess if it gets bad, I can go back in with spray glue, but you can use a little bit of spray glue if you want to, even in the center, it's just to kind of keep the material stable as you sew, or if you wanna worry about it, all right, so now as I'm sewing this, I'm sewing it with about a 3 8 inch sewing allowance. I'm going to have a, an edge that comes over, which is going to cover up the thread itself, but it just lines with this, the foot here. So this is what it looks like to sew. Now with our panel sewn, we're just going to take our shears, 
peel this back a little bit and then we'll cut the foam off or the extra foam off. And then we'll go for a test fit. Okay, so there's our finished panel. Let's go throw it in the car before we put the edging on just to kind of get a preview of it. All right, so here's what it's roughly gonna look like going side to side. The front edge is kind of stuffed down right below this carpet, so it tucks in there nice. And then I have the panel pulled forward a little bit just so it covers the edge all the way across. I'll worry about making sure that's even once I get the edging sewn on. But there you go, there's your little cover, and that's the preview of what the uh, rest of the interior is gonna look like. Seats, console top, and a bunch of other stuff. So now that we got our test fit in, I just went ahead and put on the edging. Now this is just a bias tape I bought at a local craft store. It's pretty lightweight, but I think it's gonna be just fine. Now I had to use uh, one full package and then a small piece of a second package, but this is just a double fold bias tape went on very easy. It's uh, almost an inch wide. It's 0.875 inches wide. Good stuff though. Goes on easy. Just sew it on. Pretty simple. Just gives it a clean edge there. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this back in the car and we'll show you the finished product once it's done. So there's a look at going to be your finished product. So I have the panel back in place. Tried to align the bottom with the same I guess, piece on the fabric so it looks even. And then it's laid flat on the carpet itself. So this just breaks up that black, kind of something different. Show you a little view from the outside. You at least see it in there, even though the tint's kind of blocking it out, but it's just meant to do something different, just to inspire people to say, that's something different I hadn't seen before. That's all it is, just to match it up and make it fit. So if you look that in here, kind of get a good view back. It just breaks it up, doing something different. So with that project done, it's going to be a cumulative process that I'm going to do on the Corvette this winter. But that little project there, just something simple to break it up. As a new business, I'm trying to kind of give people an idea of what you can do. It doesn't always have to be the same old thing over and over. If you have a Corvette, there's 200 something thousand C5s out there, or there were that many built. This is a little something different than most people won't see. So if you have any questions on materials I used, I'll go ahead and put links down in the description. You can find those, the specific plaid, any of the thread or the, the bias piece for the edging. All of it's pretty simple. It's a pretty simple process. Just to measure it's a 16 deep by 44 wide. You could probably go a 45 wide if you want. Uh, and 16 right there is where it is. You can always make it bigger if you have a hatchback or anything else. But it's just something to think about. Any questions, leave them down below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by.